Welcome everyone to yet another installment of Geeking Toyetic here on the Geeking Poetic Podcast channel. I, of course, am your host, Larry Roberts, and I am here to discuss collecting toys both old and new. In this episode, I would like to talk about some toys that are, in fact, both old and new. Namely, I am talking about Mego toys. Now, at this point, most folks who are into collecting toys pretty much know what I'm talking about when I say that name. But for some of you noobs out there that are like, what exactly is Mego toys? Let me give you a brief history about them and let's delve into it right now. Now, the Mego Corporation was founded in the 1950s by David Abrams, who was a legend in the business. And he was known for mostly making like kitschy household items and little cheap toys that you would find in dime stores or on the end cap of checkout aisles. But when David's son Marty Abrams took over at the start of the 1970s, that's when things for Mego really took off. The company soon found their niche in the toy market by creating action figures. Basically, dolls that had removable clothing and accessories that all kind of went on the same generic interchangeable body that made it cheap and easy to produce. And then things were really able to take off when Abrams was able to procure the licenses for properties such as the world's greatest superheroes, which featured both Marvel and DC heroes, as well as other notable properties such as Star Trek, Planet of the Apes, Wizard of Oz, and many more. Now, while there were other companies out there that were also making action figures with removable clothes and action features and stuff like Six Million Dollar Man or Big Jim or even the already long-running and very popular G.I. Joe, Mego really seemed to strike the perfect chord with kids of the 70s by making toys that were quirky and easily transportable and playable by being only about eight inches tall. And they were just so much fun to play with that these just instantly resonated with all of us kids back then. But by the late 1970s, Kenner's Star Wars toy line had really taken off and become a mega hit with kids of all ages. And this proved to be something of a challenge for Mego Corporation in terms of trying to keep up with them in an already overcrowded toy market. That being said, Mego still managed to hit it out of the park a few times with really cool new lines such as Micronauts, as well as other lines that were really popular at the time such as Buck Rogers, Happy Days, even the Dukes of Hazard, Chips, and a whole bunch of others. And most notably, with some of these new lines, Mego then ventured into creating their own three and three quarter inch action figures, which fell in line with what Star Wars had just made popular. And it was a big hit with kids because it allowed for more vehicles and play sets, which was always a good thing. And it allowed for toys at an even lower price point and even more portable. Unfortunately, due to a changing marketplace and some rather unfortunate business choices and strategies, by the early 1980s, the Meagle Corporation was defunct. And before you knew it, companies like Hasbro, Mattel, Galoob, Playmates, and several others wound up becoming the new big kids on the block with all sorts of cool lines like G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Masters of the Universe, Ghostbusters, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and so many more. Unfortunately, by the end of the 1980s, it seemed like Mego might just be doomed to have been completely forgotten and just a relic of the past. But then, welcome to the 1990s, geeks. So, in the 1990s, the term toy collector became very common, and before you knew it, it was on everybody's lips. Toy collecting was something you'd hear about more and more, and all of us kids from the 1960s and 70s now were adults who had steady paychecks and heaps and heaps of nostalgia for all the toys and things that we had grown up with and had done anything but forgotten about. Suddenly, you'd find an Every city or town in the country, they'd have toy conventions, fan conventions, toy shows, 
even garage sales, you'd be finding people scouring for these toys. And inevitably, some of the most sought out and beloved toys that everybody was trying to find during this time were Mego toys. Many of us adult collectors not only clamored for, you know, minty versions of these toys, but some of us were especially excited to try and find perfect mint in the package versions of these old toys that had never been opened before. And while the hunt was definitely on for finding Migos like still in their boxes, like this Human Torch, or some of them that were still sealed on their backing cards, it started to become really apparent that some of these toys were extremely rare and hard to find. Some of these sealed Mego toys, such as the Star Trek Aliens from Series 2 and 3 that came out in 1976, or some of the harder to find world's greatest superheroes, such as Iron Man, Green Goblin, Thor, the Lizard, wound up being really, really difficult to find in their packaging, especially on the backer cards. Man, to this day, I think there's still only like a handful of carded Green Goblin Mego figures known to even exist. And as such, some of these toys can be found fetching upwards of $10,000 or even over $20,000 on the aftermarket just because they're that rare. So the prices on these minty toys can really vary all depending on condition, rarity, or just how deep your pockets are. Indeed, collecting mint examples of Mego toys was a big thing not only for us regular peasant folks, but even for some like big name stars who grew up as kids just like we did and now could afford to buy like really cool specimens of these things and they have some amazing collections out there. Mego wound up becoming such a thing in pop culture that now you'd even see it like featured in programming for TV shows like Robot Chicken or The Venture Brothers. And they'd always be featuring the toys themselves or references to Mego toys throughout their programming. And then with the advent of the internet, you started seeing online communities pop up where Mego collectors could get together not only to talk about toys, but also to like buy, sell, trade amongst each other safely and try to find like those really hard pieces and just come together. But the one question that all throughout kept permeating amongst collectors was, whatever happened to Marty Abrams and Nego Corporation? Now over the years, many other companies had already taken a healthy look backwards by trying to re-release old long forgotten Mego toy lines or come up with Mego-like versions of characters we all loved all done as a means of capturing the interest and wallets of us collectors. And clearly it worked, because I own all this stuff. And in some cases, you even had companies like Figures Toy Company, who were making actual, like, very close reproductions of original Mego figures, like this Ace Freely here. And these toys were all really cool, for sure. Don't get me wrong, I love them. But still, the question remained, with all this interest in Mego, why wasn't the original creator of Mego putting new ones out for all of us to enjoy? Well, in 2018, it seemed that all of our questions had finally been answered. Marty Abrams was back. Mego Corporation was now making toys again. And before the end of the year, we were going to see a whole slew of new official Mego action figures. Initially starting off as a Target Store exclusive, much like the Star Wars exclusives that I discussed in the last episode, both 8-inch and 14-inch figures were released to the public amongst much fanfare and interest. And rather than just give us simple reproductions of what we'd already had for years, they decided to give us new updated versions of classics such as Star Trek, the DC Heroes, Happy Days, and a bunch of others as well as a bunch of other properties such as the Facts of Life, Married with Children, and other properties that had never had official toys ever released before. Now, just being honest with you, at first, the results were a bit mixed. As excited as we all were to see these toys back again, there was a few issues with things such as some of the sculpting and packaging issues. Like you could see, you could barely see <laughs> Green Lantern's face here. Well, they fixed that, and as you can see, it got much better. 
and the sculpting got way better as well. Like this Flash figure just looks awesome. So early on in the Mego relaunch, there were definitely a few missteps, but as they've gone on, they've definitely fixed a lot of those problems and the figures are starting to look really sharp. The new figures in the line have really upped their game in terms of nicer sculpting, better design, and really nice looking packaging as well. The ongoing line of classic monsters and horror characters like Dracula here have been really popular with collectors and they look really sharp. They're awesome. And I think it's lines like this and some of the other improvements they've made that's really gonna help Mego to thrive and carry on. It's really amazing to me as a kid of the 1970s to see that these toys that only cost a couple of bucks back in the day are still not only so sought after and so beloved by us old guys, but I even see kids collecting them now. It's become a multi-generational thing and I think that's awesome. It's cool that in an age where everything seems to be about the internet and cell phones and video games and stuff, that there are some kids that still dig just having a little action figure they can play with in the backyard when they feel like it. Now, as of this airing, it seems like the Mego toys have now become a little bit more widespread in terms of their distribution. You can find them on Entertainment Earth or on Amazon or through other outlets online. But I can tell you, especially things like the monsters and stuff, they sell out pretty quickly. And before you know it, they're already moving on to the next batch. So if you're interested in these, don't wait. Jump on them while you can find them. Well, it's that time again for my Geek Seek of the Week. With the Geek Seek of the Week segment, I like to tell you guys about a particular toy that I think is worth seeking out that you might be able to find a good deal on, but it's totally collectible and worth having. On the subject of old Mego toys, I mentioned earlier about how one of the hardest ones to find, in the sealed package especially, are the Star Trek Mego Aliens from 1976. Now these aliens were released more towards the end of the line. They started coming out in the second series and especially in the third series. By the time the third series came out, the line was waning a little bit and Mego were moving on to other properties and other ideas. They had started doing Micronauts and all that stuff and there just wasn't that much interest put in the Star Trek line at that point. The Star Trek aliens wound up kind of being overlooked a little bit. Distribution was limited, and as such now, almost any of the Star Trek aliens in their packaging is worth a lot of money. On top of all that, the Star Trek aliens, how do I say it? They weren't so screen accurate. If you look at figures like the Keeper, or Telosian, or the Gorn, they don't really look anything like they did on the screen. They're, they're kind of a big mess, which for a lot of us, adds to their kitschiness and they're kind of cool to collect anyway because of that because they're just so goofy looking. But at least they were trying to make characters that had been on the TV show. All except for one. That one I'm referring to is none other than the Neptunian. Now, who is the Neptunian you ask? Beats the hell out of me. Seriously, this character never appeared on the TV show. Now, whether or not there was somebody like him that might have appeared on the animated series from the early 70s, I, I can't confirm or deny that. But the point is, they basically made this dude up. Considering how many aliens there were on Star Trek, why they felt the need to just completely make one up from scratch is completely beyond me. The toy designers at Mego were a pretty creative bunch, and they came up with a pretty cool looking action figure, if you ask me. I love the head sculpt on this guy. I love the big webbed hands and feet on him. The suit is pretty simple, but pretty effective. And I don't know, I always just thought this figure was pretty cool. He's just a creepy little alien. And he certainly looks a whole lot better than that weird little Telosian in the jumpsuit. Or God forbid the Disco Mugatu. Seriously, I know Disco was in, but what were they thinking? Anyhow, the Neptunian still isn't super easy to get. But I think because he's not an actual character from the show, he tends to be a little bit easier to track down. And as such, you can find him for a pretty reasonable price if you look really hard. Compared to what I paid for the other Star Trek aliens in the line, I was able to get this guy for a pretty good price. 
Now, why should you seek this one out in particular? Well, here's why. With Meagle Corporation back on the shelves and making more and more Star Trek figures every month, there's a good chance that some of the other aliens are going to be reproduced and sold again on shelves. Like we've already seen a Romulan made, and we've seen their much better updated version of the Gorn figure on the shelves. But one figure I have a strong feeling they are not going to reproduce anytime soon is the Neptunian. So if you end up wanting to get a Neptunian, getting the original one is probably gonna be your only way to go. And while you can still get them for a reasonable price, I think this is one you should seek out, guys. I mean, he's goofy looking, but come on, how can you not love a face like that? Star Trek Aliens Neptunian figure. He don't make no sense, but that's my geek seek of the week. So there you have it, folks. That's your little history lesson for the day about Mego Corporation, a toy company that means a lot to me because these were some of my most beloved toys as a kid. And it's great to see that all these years later, they are back and they're thriving and they've got much more cool stuff in store for us. And if you're interested in hearing more about Mego toys or doing more research into them or meeting people like me and others who are into Mego toys, you can find us all at an awesome website called Mego Museum. Mego Museum is a site and a forum that's been going on for quite a while now. And it's a community of worldwide Mego collectors who love to talk about Mego, gather all the information that we can to be a definitive source of information and it's just a great place on the forums to talk to other nerds like me about your love for Mego toys. So definitely check it out at www.megomuseum.com. All right everybody, I think I've said all that needs to be said for this episode. As always, it has been so much fun sitting here talking about my favorite subject, toy collecting, with all of you out there. We would love to know what you guys think. What do you think of Geeking Toyetic? What are your favorite toys to collect? And what do you want to hear us talk about? Please comment below, send us a message, share this video with your other toy geek friends. We appreciate all of your support and make sure you follow and subscribe to this channel. I will be back before you know it with plenty more to discuss when it comes to toys. In the meantime, all I gotta say is, me gotta go. Bye.